The following video covers the CNH Model 450 splitter box retrofit. The first thing you'll need to do is place your skid steer over a work pit or place on elevated blocking. Be sure to chalk wheels so that unit will not roll. Next, put the boom in the full up position. Then lower the safety blocking into place. Now remove skid plate to access lower engine compartment. The next thing to do is to drain the oil from the hydraulic system. The drain plug is located on the left rear of the machine. Have containers capable of holding approximately 15 gallons available. After the oil has been drained, a good sealant could be applied to the drain plug and replaced. It is our recommendation that the hydraulic hoses and tubing be removed from both hydraulic pumps in both the upper and lower compartments. If you are not familiar with the hydraulic layout on this piece of equipment, it is recommended that you mark the tubing as shown in this photo. Next, both the right and left control linkage should be removed. Take care to block off all hoses and ports so that no contamination will enter the hydraulic system. There are two wires located on the bottom of each pump. Make note of their position before removing. Now, both pumps can be removed with the aid of a cherry picker or an overhead crane. At this point, the rest of the original gearbox components can be removed until all you have left is the flywheel and the back of the engine housing. Be sure to clean all surfaces to accept new components. Next, install the Hexflex hub on the flywheel so the rib side is visible. Apply red Loctite to all fasteners holding Hexflex plate to flywheel. Next, using a torque wrench, tighten all bolts to 25 foot-pounds of torque using a crisscross pattern. Remove the filler slash vent component from the old gearbox and place on the haze unit. In your retrofit kit, you will find two pump gears with tapered collar locking rings installed on them. You will need to take each screw out one at a time and place red Loctite on it before installing it on the pump. When you're reinstalling the cap screws through the tapered locking ring, make sure that it stays parallel with the front and back face of the gear. Now you can place the gear on the pump shaft with the socketed cap screws facing outward. Next, put snap ring on end of spline shaft. Use Hayes Tool T-0398 to hold the gear in place while torquing cap screws. In order to get the collar locking system torqued correctly, you will need to move around the circumference of all bolts in a crisscross pattern until you get a uniform torque. You might have to go through the tightening pattern two or three times to achieve this. Again, using an overhead crane or cherry picker, you may lower the hay splitter box into location, being sure to align the Hexflex hub with the drive plate mounted on the flywheel. Apply red Loctite to 12 10 by 1.5 by 80 bolts used for fastening splitter box to engine housing. Torque these bolts to 40 foot pounds. Before installing pump, be sure that O-ring part number 568-044 is installed on pump. Again, with the aid of an overhead crane or a cherry picker, reinstall the first pump. For sealing the bolts that hold the pump in place, use an automotive grade RTV silicone. Apply 70 foot-pounds of torque to the pump mounting bolts. At this point, before installing the second pump, the dipstick filler tube assembly must be installed. Apply a small amount of red Loctite to the tube end to ensure a good seal. At this point, the second pump can be reinstalled following the same torque ratings as on the previous pump. Now you can reattach all hydraulic and electrical connections. Remove the filler cap to fill the gearbox with an SAE 8090 gear lube. The splitter box holds approximately two quarts. Verify that the unit is full with the dipstick. Reinstall vent cap. Refill the hydraulic reservoir at this time using an automotive SAE 10W30 oil. Now you may start the unit and look for any hydraulic leaks. This should complete the retrofit process.